Let's assume you're familiar with three-part storytelling commonly seen in Hollywood and movies. Now, let's, come here, come here. Let's assume that these might not be the most effective storytelling methods for YouTube. Over the many years I've been on YouTube, I've learned a couple of key techniques that revolutionized the way that I tell stories here on this platform. And although the three-part act does apply in some cases on YouTube and it shares a lot of similarities to a lot of the YouTube videos that we create, there are a couple of other little storytelling methods that I found have helped me hugely when I'm trying to plan and shoot and create my videos. Storytelling, in my opinion, is one of the most complex and difficult to master aspects of filmmaking. And it's something that I'm constantly working on. I in no means have mastered it, but these things have helped me drastically. So I thought that I would share them with you guys today. I recently created a series of videos on my channel. They are called Spaces Between Dreams and they're like these mini dark vlog story driven pieces of content and I'm gonna reference them throughout this video. If you guys wanna go and see any of them, I highly suggest it. It's some of my favorite work that I've created in over the last years. I'll link them down in the description. I used all of these methods in those videos so I think you'll see how I kind of applied them in a real life way once you guys get the kind of gist of how I actually did them. The first one and the one we're gonna start with Technique one is circular storytelling. This is one of my favorites and one that I didn't learn until that recently. You can do this in a lot of ways, but you wanna kind of introduce some sort of question or theory in the beginning of your video and then your video plays out. It can kind of take a few different directions, but towards the end of your video, you kind of end up back where you started, hence the circular storytelling. So you're creating this circle where you kind of end where you started and the start is at the end and it like does this loop. It's a really nice way of creating a sense of completion or unity in your film's narrative. And I also think that it's a really nice way of making it seem like you know what you're doing, even in some cases when you don't. If you end up back at that same point, it just rounds everything off and the viewer feels like, Hmm, that was well thought out and they obviously know what they're talking about. It was a really nice little circuit of storytelling method. So very good technique and one you guys should definitely practice and mess around with. The next technique is something I've mentioned recently and it is called reverse storyboarding. Almost always when people refer to storyboarding, they are doing it in a chronological manner. You're kind of figuring out your beginning and working through your film or video and getting to that end piece. Something that makes it really easy to comprehend what your video is really gonna be about and how you're gonna cover everything is by starting with that end. Figure out what that resolution or the point of your entire video is and you can work backwards from there. It's easy to figure that piece out and once you do have that end figured out, you can kind of just work backwards and figure out how you get there. So maybe in the same as our circular storytelling, you have a answer to a question. That's what your story is gonna be about. So you have the answer to that question and you can come back from there going through how you're getting to that answer, what the question actually is that you are gonna be answering. It doesn't always have to be something like a question. It can also be something if you take, for example, maybe a less story-driven piece, maybe you're creating like a cinematic travel video of someone hiking up a mountain. How I would apply this to that scenario is, I know that I wanna film the person being at the top of the mountain, that grand viewpoint that they're gonna to arrive to, maybe it's a beautiful sunset location, whatever. So I can have that and then I can go, what else could I include in the story beforehand to build a bit of a flow to make it more immersive for the viewers? So they're gonna be at the top, they're gonna to be at the top of the mountain looking at that amazing sunset, that's my ending, boom. Now the middle is obviously gonna be them getting up that mountain, hiking, and somehow arriving at that viewpoint. You can include whatever you want there. And then the beginning, what would they need to go hiking? Maybe you can show them arriving at the bottom, packing their bags, getting their things ready. 
You can apply this to any sort of scenario, but having that end goal just makes that whole pathway a hell of a lot clearer and much easier to lay out before you actually get to the point of creating the footage. Let's look at a more talking head style tips tutorial video exactly like this one. There's a couple of very nice little techniques that I like to introduce into my scripts to make sure that I am portraying the best story I can. The first one, and kind of an obvious one, but it's often overlooked, I like to straight just start in the middle. You don't always need that beginning, that whole introduction, everything like leading up to where your story is gonna actually like kind of take place. In this scenario, it's me explaining these tips to you guys, so it's not a traditional story, but instead a YouTube video, which is the point of these. And how I started this video, it was kind of just straight in the middle. I didn't have a big build up or intro. I was just like, let's assume you guys know this. Now, this is that. And I just straight up start, and it's a way of immediately grabbing the viewer's attention and throwing them straight into that story, almost like they need to figure out what's going on to kind of catch up and keep up with what you're explaining. It's often kind of assumed and something I see far too often is people will have these big intros of like, this is what we're gonna cover, we're gonna be doing this, I'm gonna tell you guys about this, I'm Sean and I do this. And it's great and it's nice, but often people kind of just don't care. And it's this just like kind of polite formality that people assume they need to copy because other people do it. And I find some of my most successful and effective videos that maintain the highest audience retention are just when I just hit the ground running and start. You're straight in the middle, boom, catch up, figure out what's going on. All of the juicy, valuable bits are immediately just happening. That is something that I'm really focusing on implementing in all of my videos. And it's something that I would suggest you try and see how it works for you as well. One of my favorites is unclosed loops, and these apply specifically well in YouTube videos, whether it's talking videos, tutorials, or just vlogs and more traditional storytelling style videos. And the reason is because you're essentially leaving elusive threads kind of dangling in the narrative's tapestry so that people are enticed to know that there's something more coming. Think of them as these kind of intriguing mysteries lingering and begging for a solution only to be answered later on in the story so that the viewer has to stick around to find out what the answers to these things are. Somewhere that you might have noticed this is when someone will open a video and kind of tease something, maybe the video is gonna be answering a question and they'll tease this like magical solution that's coming on later down the line that you have to stick around for if you wanna know this big, big secret or this solution to this huge problem, I'm gonna tell you a little bit later on the video. This is a very like face forward way of having an unclosed loop in your story. You can do it in a lot more subtle ways as well and kind of just tease these things so that the viewer expects more value to be offered later down, giving them some incentive to stick around or at least enough intrigue to have to wanna see what that answer or how that loop is gonna be closed later. If you have a somewhat more traditional storytelling piece where it's like some vlog or something, you can also have unanswered questions that aren't neatly tied up. Just as in real life, not every loose end is neatly tied off and every question answered with a clear answer. These different techniques can all overlap and they can all be used with and without one another. So introducing a few of these different things into one video is a great way of making your video feel more well-rounded with multiple different storytelling techniques happening inside of that one video. Like I mentioned, storytelling is an incredibly complex and very, very difficult thing to master in filmmaking. It's something I'm working on constantly. So hopefully some of these techniques can find their way into your storytelling methods and hopefully you'll notice some interesting little ways of telling your stories in the future. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.